Welcome to the World Cup Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the west coast of the U.S., Josh Lander, joined by my mate Dan Tracy on the on the other side of the pond there. Dan, how are you today, sir? Yeah, very well, thank you. Gearing up for England's clash against Wales. If England don't qualify for the round of 16 and it all goes wrong, then my interest in the World Cup is going to completely wane. Hopefully that's not the case, and hopefully it's not the case for you if the United States don't do the, uh, the job against Iran either. So it's a big evening of action for both of us, isn't it? Yes, our hearts are on the line. I am staying away from betting on today's matches, he said, with still an hour, two hours to play until uh, the kickoff, so I still have time to go back on what I just said. <laughs> However, we are looking today uh, at the Thursday matches, December the 1st, as we crawl into the month of December. Uh, this will be the third and final round of matches uh, for the, the, the group there, uh, Group E with Costa Rica, Germany, Japan, Spain. That's a complete mess. Talk about those games that are the second round of games, 11 a.m. Pacific out here on the West coast uh of the u.s as we say uh so i do want to say continue to like and subscribe to the page reminding you we're coming back to you every day of the world cup no sleep until this thing is over for dan nor myself uh we also have the lines.com where dan has all of the great written content about everything we talk about here and more uh up there and our odds finder tool that you can use to shop all of the lines that you're uh, betting on here in this world cup get the best odds and juice that you want for your money uh let's go ahead and jump into this group e which is a complete mess dan um as customers Costa Rica uh, beat Japan, completely fucking mucking everything up. Spain and Germany tied to help increase all of the confusion here. Do me a favor and uh, just run through the scenarios as Germany and Costa Rica play and Japan and Spain will play at the same time. Okay, so the permutations are as follows. Spain will qualify for the round of 16 with a win or a draw. Japan can go through with victory over Spain, while a draw coupled with deadlock in the Costa Rica-Germany game would also ensure that they progress. If they... I'll beat by Spain, they'll go out. If the match ends in a draw and Costa Rica triumph against Germany, goal difference will be required. Costa Rica can reach the last 16 by defeating Germany. They'd have six points. A draw would also see them guarantee uh, entry into the next round if Spain overcome Japan. Germany have to pick up three points to stay in contention. Victory for Costa Rica, sorry, victory over Costa Rica, coupled with a win for Spain, would see them qualify. A draw between Spain and Japan or a win for Japan would take the equation to goal difference. All other results for Germany, that being a draw or a loss, would see them knocked out. So hopefully right. that that kind of demystifies it a bit. It's time to get the calculators yeah. out during the, the two matches. So when you've got those permutations and all the kind of ebb and flow that comes with it, yeah. you're kind of looking at a case of, we've mentioned a couple of episodes now, like the in-play value. So that's going to be something to consider because it could go so many different ways. But from a starting point, you're probably looking at goals, aren't you? Because if Costa Rica ships seven and then they beat Japan, you don't really know where the form guy's going to go in terms of how many goals are going to be scored in the game. She's got seven at one end, one at the other. So maybe split the difference. Seven plus one divided by two is four. Mm-hmm. So I'm going for something like, you know, even over 3.5 is minus 125. That's not really interesting enough. Let's go for over 4, 4.5 in total. That's plus 175. I think that's a good starting point in terms of goals. But again, if Costa Rica go ahead, they're going to want to batten down the hatches, aren't they? So Germany needs to rack up the goals, but they need to make sure they score first. I mean, if you look at Germany to win and over 3.5 goals, even that's only minus 110. That's not a great price. I mean, it's probably the way things are going to go. But you're asking for, what, four total goals and a Germany win in a group which has already been blown wide open to get less than a plus figure. Yeah. You know, it's you know why would you sort of do that in such a dramatic group? So I feel in play is the way to go in this one. Yeah. I agree. I mean, just to to summarize what, what we're saying in short for the Costa Rica Germany match. I mean, there's no value on on these money lines. Germany's minus nine hundred. Costa Rica to come away with a win is plus two thousand. Maybe you consider it after their showing against Japan and the and just the lackluster showing from Germany, scoring a total of two goals in their first matches. Um, the draws plus nine fifty, not quite likely, but you know, a wonderful juice there if you're interested. Um, the situation is Germany needs to win. That that's plain and simple. Everything you just said was was spot on, and there's a ton of math that needs to be done to figure out this group. But in short, Germany needs to win. Period, or they go home. So for them in this game, it's very simple. Um, goals in the back of the net. I'm nervous to, to to bet on too many too many goals being scored in this game um, because of the fact that I think Costa Rica's ba- you know they're batching down the hatches anyway at, at, from the start. Uh, I, I think they realize that if this game opens up in space in any way uh, and that Germany has the ability to play with the ball anywhere on their side of the field uh, without you know ample defenders behind the ball for Costa Rica, then then they're they're in trouble uh, from the start because Germany's going to be pressing pressing pressing. And if they don't, then they deserve to go home anyway. Uh, the Germans because if they're not 
able to come out with uh, sort of a vigor uh, against this Costa Rica team that, with what they need to win. Th- that that's pathetic. So uh, you know the other match, Germany is watching the other match, but they need to win. P- plain and simple. Costa Rica, like I said, they can tie and move forward as you mentioned, right? Uh, but they'd obviously prefer to win. I, I think they they take this the route of buried out, you know, stay stay home um, with the defense, as I said, from the jump. Because if they can at least get a tie, that puts them in a better position. Um, they're at least putting themselves in a position to be able to qualify at that point, and and not too bad of a position to be honest either, despite their awful goal differential um, with that victory over Japan, which helps them a ton. So that fourth point for them could be super crucial um, and, and enough to get them over in the likely event that Japan's unable to beat uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the Spanish team who looks really, really good so far. So I, I think a lack of goals in this one, I, I mean, I'm going under three and a half um, goals at even money. If you go under two and a half, uh, you know, to plus 250, the only reason I'm considering a lack of goals is because I just, I don't like what I've seen from the Germans. And if you're Costa Rica and you're and you're willing to say just put everybody in the in in our our third and stand there you know I I, I don't know I, I'm starting to believe like what the teams that are playing are telling me for instance the Dutch this morning that we watched uh unable to put more than two goals in against the Qataris uh and they didn't need it and that's fine and maybe we should have all seen that but I thought that you know maybe they would come out with a little bit of ego uh and try to put some balls in the back of the net uh and I, I they didn't they didn't and they just continue to show us they're not they're not doing that they're not attacking and they're not playing with vigor up front um and, and i'm just starting to believe what teams are telling me through their first two games as opposed to thinking they're going to turn things all the way around is my point and for germany to turn things all the way around it would mean a ton more goals as opposed to what they've been doing which is lackluster uh attacking you know creativity of any kind so that's why i'm actually leaning a little bit less here just because of the fact that i, I you know costa rica is playing so hard for a tie um, but moving on to the, the other games starting at 11, Dan, uh, Easter, or excuse me, 11 Pacific out here on the West coast in the same group, Japan and Spain, um, a bit, you know, more simple odds, but still plus 700. I have for Japan on the three-way money line, uh, to win draw plus 380 and Spain minus 250 to win outright. Uh, so what say you, what, what do you see in this game for value? I like the look of Japan or draw in the double charts market at plus 200 because, yeah, their performance against Costa Rica, that being Japan, was an aberration, really. How they lost that game after doing so well against Germany, their hard work was completely undone. But they have shown they have got that shot result in them. You know, they've done it once. Why can't they do it again? Now, we've gone through the permutations. A draw might not be enough for Japan and Spain to draw and Costa Rica and Germany to draw. That's going to be an incredibly high price double. You might even fancy that yourself if you want a bit of extra value. Back those two matches at a tie and find some juice there. But... Whether Japan can go through, I'm not too sure, but I don't see them losing this game. I don't know why. I've just got a knack that they have been a refreshing sight in this tournament. You know, the way they blew Germany apart in that first game, they were so unfortunate not to get anything from that Costa Rica game, especially at the very ends of the match when the ball was bouncing about the Costa Rica box. They should have at least got a point and they might regret not getting that point. But I just like the look of another upset, really. There's a bit more chaos. I feel Spain will have enough to qualify Mm. and Japan, I can't see losing. So I'm going to go and just nail a plus 200 double chance for Japan or the draw. Which would pretty much put them through, right? Japan draws with Spain. Costa Rica would have to beat Germany for them to to fail to qualify, no? So if Japan draw and Costa Rica and Germany draw, Japan would go through. If Japan draw and Costa Rica win, right. then Costa Rica go through. That's if the only Germany, way. Yeah, if Germany win, they would be on four points. Japan would be on four points. Four points, and it would go down to goal difference. So it would be right. about the... Germany win so a 1-0 win I think would see them Germany right. go out on the head-to-head record because Japan beat Germany anything right. more than that and have tied goal differential yeah anything right. more than yeah. that say, say Germany 2-0 win Germany, and a draw yeah, yeah. So, so there we right, go. Right. <laughs> Japan Japan in a draw is is still putting them in, in a tough position. Um and they're unable to watch that Germany game. So some some fun stuff. This is where the live betting for sure comes into play in this group, Dan, where if if Germany uh are winning by two nothing, three nothing against Costa Rica and Japan know it and they're say tied with uh you know with um Spain there. They need another goal at that point, right? So then they start pressing, and you can start to to bet some live stuff. Uh, if Japan needs to start pressing to open things up, now you can bet on another, you know, over on the goals live and things of that nature, as as the game might be blown a little bit more open because Japan Japan know a tie doesn't get them through with the the Germany goal differential, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, lots to look forward to there, and going to be a fun day uh, as we, to kick off December, as we said. So the other group 
not quite as fun, a little bit more simple. Uh, not fun for me anyway, because Belgium looks awful. Uh, they're taking on Croatia. And then uh, the other game, uh, as we know, is the uh, Canadians, who are the uh, only team besides the Qataris that were eliminated before uh, Tuesday's matches, uh, Canada taking on Morocco. So simply put in this match, uh, in these these two matches, Belgium, uh, th- well, excuse me, Croatia, who have the four points, uh, a tie or a draw, see them through. Um, Morocco, uh, a tie or a draw, see them through. Through, right Belgium needs to beat Croatia and get some help in the other game Mer- Can- uh, Canada's out so Belgium basically they need to beat Croatia uh, and have Morocco get no points uh for them to to really feel comfortable with it or they can have a really strong goal differential but they lost two nothing to Morocco so the goal differential is going to be hard to come by as I don't see them blowing out Croatia in any way who looked magnificent uh in that game against Morocco in my opinion as they at least for the final let's say 70 minutes maybe the first 20 Morocco was strongly in that match uh Croatia came back strongly so in the Belgium Croatia match to kick that off the the 7 a.m pacific time games off on on Thursday there uh Croatia plus 170 a draw plus 230 Belgium also plus 170 on the money line there. Uh, the draw no bet for both teams is minus 110 as well. Uh, so, you know, it's it's pretty even evenly uh, slated here. So uh, where, where do you start for the value in this match? Well, I can't see why the odds are even because when you look at the way Belgium have played, to get them at the same price as Croatia, I feel does Croatia a massive disservice. Yes, I understand that Belgium needs to win, so that's probably why it's been pegged to equilibrium, but I just, I don't see it. I mean, I... You know yourself, you've watched the two Belgian matches. They have just been absolutely useless for a team of their talent. Some of the parts have been nothing. So if you're tossing a coin and it's 50-50 on either side, why would you go for Belgium in this instance? You know, the draw probably offers more value, but I wouldn't be backing a Belgian win. Even though they need a win, I wouldn't be going there. So if I had to pick one, it'd be Croatia. Maybe Croatia or a draw in the double chance. That's minus 225 if you want to play it a little safer. But again, you know, I just don't see how Belgium claw out them claw out of Group F, to be honest. And in terms of goals, I'm probably going for under 2.5 at minus 125. Again, you know, maybe a bankroll builder, but I just don't see this one being full of goals because I don't see where the Belgian goal for it is. Precisely. Um, Precisely right. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) I might even... I'm considering uh, the Croatians minus one and a half uh, at this point, to be honest, uh, and, and that would get me a, a bit more as well. I think that gets me over uh, by plus 220 or so over here in the States uh, is the best one I can find on the books for them to win by by two goals. Um, you get about two and a half to one on your money. I feel good about that for the I mean, I feel like it's worth it anyway for the Croatians because I do feel as though this line is misrepresented. If you're banking on on the Belgians showing spine in this game as the reason that they might uh, have, have those odds crawled closer you know, to, to even for them in this game. Uh, I don't know why you would. That's the one thing they've shown nothing uh, to do, which is heart, uh, which is a desire to build anywhere in the in the attacking third, the desire to play consistently. Like they would rather have the percentage be 68% their way while they're sitting with Vertonghen and Aldevere pa- passing the ball literally back and forth to each other with Courtois having a nice little triangle game uh, for minutes at a time, then play a ball up and risk losing the possession in, in the other third. I have no idea why. If you're going to play that way, then you're relying on getting it up into the attacking uh, wings. You have three forwards, so you need the two outside wings to be getting the ball into space up top and crossing the ball in. And they're not getting the ball anywhere up there, so I don't know what their plan is of attack, but it just seems that it's not there in terms of a plan of attack. The plan is just pass, 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 and lollygag around uh, and play in the field together like and pick the grass. So if if that's going to be what it is, I also like a lack of goals. I like a 2-0 Croatia victory, to be honest with you, and I might as well also... guess that correct score if I'm going to go minus one and a half as I don't see the Belgians able to put a goal on this very structured Croatian defense plus 1400 for the Croatians to win two nothing I'm just basically going and and, and saying like I, I believe in nothing to do with this Belgian team I don't believe in them scoring goals and I don't believe uh in um you know in them being as a result being able to obviously win and I they're going to give up at least one uh so a one nothing or two nothing score for the Croatians feels right um and, and I might as well go ahead and take the plus 1400 on two nothing a little bit and feel pretty good about it because the uh, the bookmakers don't seem to feel as confident in, in or they seem to have more confidence in Belgium than I do anyway. So uh, finishing this one off, Morocco and Canada, uh, the Canadians came out strong against Croatia as I, I kind of thought they might, to be honest, and they score in that first three minutes as they have speed up top and, and they caught, um, you know, the Croatians off guard a little bit. 
as soon as that was done with uh, the Croatians, just put them back in their place and looked really good. But Morocco was able to hang with Croatia for that entirety of that match, uh, despite giving up two posts uh, that the Croatians did hit as well. So Morocco's plus 115 to win this one on the money line. Canada plus 255. The draw plus 235. The question I have is, do you think the Moroccans will rest on their laurel? Follow-up question, do you think the Canadians still come out with some heart and vigor despite being eliminated so early? I don't think the Moroccans will rest on their laurels just yet because they can't quite afford to. You know, if they had six points, you're absolutely right. I feel, you know, job done. Let's refresh our squad, get to round 16, we'll go again. I don't see that happening just yet because of the permutations that could happen. Whereas Canada, yes, they could be paying for pride, but I feel that when you've got zero points and you've been a bit deflated, they haven't embarrassed themselves at all. They've got a lot of pride to take from their two performances, but I don't see them having this sort of heroic last roll of the dice and sort of going all out and winning something and sort of surprising Morocco. So the fact that Morocco start at plus 110, I think that's a really good starting point in terms of just a a bet in terms of a three-way market. I feel, you know, why not? Because Morocco's still got a job to do, so why not take the the plus odds on that front? But again, Canada have scored in both their matches, so both teams to score and a Morocco win at plus 350 could be worth a, they actually a good shout it. as well. I hate to correct you, but they did not, they failed to score. Oh, they didn't. Yeah, no, they yeah, didn't, yeah. did they? Missed that well, penalty. No. It was such bad. a boring game with a penalty that should have gone in. You're completely right. Um, but do you, I, I still see what you say. I mean, they, yes. they had chances. The, the, to Let's, be under exactly. Clear. Let's yeah. believe they scored. But yes, you're absolutely, sorry, I made a lapse, lapse of judgment there and I rarely no, no, do that. Right, but right. You're, no, you're absolutely right. So, but with that said, they haven't been bad in attack. They've just not had quite the sharpness. So yeah. if we assume that they had loads of chances against Belgium, which many people wouldn't have envisaged, and they missed that penalty, on another yeah. day, that's a goal. So, yeah, yeah. you know, the goals are there. And yeah, they yeah. did score against Croatia. So I'm confident that it's going to be a Morocco win and both teams to score. You yeah. get that at plus 350. And if you want to be really confident, I'd go with a 2-1 Morocco win. That's plus 900. Yeah. I'm going to be very forgiving on you, Dan. I think you've watched like 37 World Cup matches <laughs> in 11 days, my friend. Like, it's all good to have forgotten that they missed the PK, didn't hit, uh, they hit a post. They they had Courtois, had a number. He looked amazing in that game, by the way. The only thing that had me feeling like Belgium might be have a chance in this entire cup was the way Thibaut Courtois was playing, uh, continuing to lead the, this World Cup in the most saves uh, of any keeper that's playing right now uh, as he continues to climb up the leaderboard of saves all time in the World Cup, looking really, really good, uh, mostly because that Belgium team makes him have to look really, really, really good for the Real Madrid keepers. So it's going to be brilliantly exciting that day. Uh, I mean, the, the Morocco-Canada match is the only one that I'm kind of like, I don't care if I tune into that one. Uh, but the first two matches of the day, I will be turning back and forth between Germany, Costa Rica, and Spain, Japan. Who am I kidding? I'll have both of them on different monitors. Uh, and then for Belgium, Croatia, I'll be mostly fixated on that one until I uh, probably break my remote control. Uh, and then I have to turn it off because my wife is mad at me. So uh, that is all the time we have on this one, though, Dan. Let's go ahead and prep for this, uh, for our, our countries to play today, Iran and the U.S. and then England uh, taking on uh, the feisty Welsh today. So uh, until we see you guys next, happy betting. 